Well, here's an update on my tanker that I built a few months ago. It's the most used vehicle at the farm so far this year. So fun to drive and so useful and everybody's got to try it when they come, that's for sure. Well, the worst thing that's gone wrong with it is a starter motor. Most of the times when you turn the key, it just would go screech and not engage. So as you can see, the edges of the Bendix are all chewed off. Well, this is actually the starter motor from my Cressida. The guy who I got the Cressida from had a couple parts cars and he saved all the things like this so he gave me two spare starter motors and this is a rebuilt one. So I took the Bendix out of that starter motor, which was exactly the same as the Cressida one, and I put the Cressida one back in here just to keep all this sealed together in case I need more parts in the future and I put the good one on there. Now when you crank that key, she engages 100% every time, no more grinding. Next problem was these relays got mudded too much and wouldn't start sometimes. It was just water in the relays. I always save relays from every car I scrap, so I just plugged in a couple more and repositioned them and put mud flaps on so it's better now. Next, look at that decrepit fender. It's barely hanging on. It's easy to get in this thing by just stepping on the leaf spring and climbing up onto that pad to climb in. Well, some people decide to step on the fenders and then they realize what they've done and bent it down. And so they bend it back up. Well, when it gets enough bends up and down, the metal fractures. That one's completely gone. So I'm going to have to re-weld that back together, replace that one. I've still got the piece. And weld another support bracket in here. And that'll eventually solve that problem. When this thing's loaded with people and let people borrow it, they sometimes really off-road it and abuse it since it is a truck frame and it's pretty hard to break. But these watering this big watering tube underneath is bent backwards on both sides. And as you can see, and that kind of restricts water flow coming out. So I may have to replace that tube soon enough. I acquired a piece of I-beam to weld in front of it to give it protection so it won't happen again. Well, when all those seats are loaded with people and everybody wants to come down Sky Hill because it feels just like the G-forces on a roller coaster, the motor gets G-forces too. And my only modification I made was weld a little steel pin in there to stop the motor from moving as far forward as it does when it comes slamming down that hill. But it has moved the motor enough, at least a half inch, to hit the radiator and bruise it. Luckily, it hasn't started leaking yet, so the cooling system is still good. Another crazy problem. After a little while when you started giving it full acceleration it would just start misfiring and running like really like crap. You'd take the air cleaner off and it would run perfect. We had five guys here all working on it trying to figure out what was wrong. Just set the air cleaner on even loosely it would do the same thing. Well Rick figured it out and we had to add a 3 16th inch spacer between the carb and the air cleaner and that fixed it for some reason. It doesn't look like it's interfering with the choke, but he said it was, but I don't want to argue because it works. It's really strange because it is all stock. None of the welds have broken or any cracks anywhere, so all of that structural stuff is good. Oh yeah, this contraption. Bloke and Ozzy put that on there. It actually functions amazingly well, except on rough terrain. Gives you that unique bird's eye view with a wide angle lens when you're using a Go GoPro cam to watch the women get all excited when you're doing Sky Hill and driving through the back 40, you know, way back there. Only problem is it needs some sort of dampening system. Anything that's eight feet long is going to vibrate. So I'm thinking of just adding one more thing on there that's sort of a dampened elastic thing just to absorb minor oscillations and then the classic footage he got if we ever can catch it again with some fresh virgin women who've never been on it before may be able to be reproduced. He does have some awesome footage but he's just really going to put it on YouTube because it's a little bit shaky but it's really cool. So she's been damn dependable and abused a lot more than my other specialty creations I've made out here. So let's hope it lasts as long as those other two special cars like the redneck roller coasters. Both of those are over 10 years old.